Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Auto Resource YouTube channel. You are looking with me on 2009 Jetta Bagon, which I purchased approximately a week ago. And when I got here in the shop right next day, I removed the wheels and I really saw the rust on the rear and front brakes. This vehicle apparently was an entire time here in California only, but the title came also from the New York. It was East Coast for a while, and there is really a lot of rust on these brakes. And we will start looking actually for the wheel lock key. When I was purchasing this vehicle, I made sure with the owner that actually that key was present in the vehicle and on this generation of Jetta it's right here. Here is this little baby, the wheel bolts and also this tool that lock key are 17 millimeters so I can maybe start with this, I just match it, very easy. Here it is, out, I can put the lock key on side and the rest of four. The wheel is off so I can finally show you the condition and how bad shape that the rotor for example is. If you look inside, there's a lot of rust and it doesn't matter that the brake pads Regarding the thickness, they are almost brand new. There are many problems with the rust and I want to replace the brake pads. But because of that rust, also the rotors. Let me show you that one part right here and I'm sure you will agree. This is where the pads are breaking on the rotor and the rust actually did the holes in this surface so i will continue with removing this retaining spring that should work nicely with a screwdriver here we go next i will go ahead and remove these two dust caps one here and one here. I hope you can see I'm not in your way with my hand. And I will continue with removing both guide pins, which are nice and clean. The dust cap did a good job. And that will be the hex number seven, seven millimeter hex. Nice, they are not rusted at all very easy to loosen I love it now the top one oh yeah also very easy to loosen so I will slide that caliper away it's actually coming with that outer brake pad and the inner tool so, I will take it away and carefully I will remove the inner pad, I hope you can see it, because there is that wire. I will rest it here for just a second, oops, hang the caliper so I'm not damaging the line and now I have that inner pad with that wire which indicates the wear buttons. yeah it's the tab right here that's the down and that should slide down for some reason it doesn't want to go but oh yeah right now finally and I will continue with loosening 
and removing these two large bolts. They are 21 millimeter bolts, pretty large. They will be tight. Did you hear that? Yep. Okay. Here are those two bolts and that brake carrier. And seriously, look at that rust. We will have a lot of cleaning right here. So we are back at the rotor. And there is that little bolt holding it on the hub. And that's a Torx T30. That shouldn't be really tight. The torque is only 4 Newton meter. Uh, yeah. Sometimes this is rusted in and it actually can create problems. I'm very happy that this one gave. Oh yeah, there's rust on it. That's exactly why it was stuck. Do you see that? Now, if this whole thing was installed yesterday, the rotor will just come off the hub, but we, de we are dealing with a lot of rust, as you can see, that the entire time, so I will need a... Oh my god, you should see what's coming on the floor. Yep, guys, it was correct call. I don't like wasting money, but just the chunks of rust falling on the floor of the shop confirm that this needs to be replaced. It was like a rain of the rust flakes on the floor when I hit that few times with that sledgehammer. Here we can see the hub and we can start with cleaning this. And to get to this area I will use wire brush. And to prevent that rust, I will use this. It's an antisys. This one is based on aluminum. So very thin. You don't need to soak it with it, but very thin layer. Whatever you want to touch on this surface. Now for this brake carrier. This is really important part because that's where the brake pads are traveling in these channels. And we normally just clean it with the wire brush, but I don't think it will be enough in this case due to the rust. Okay, mister. Of course, the moment we start filming, the phone starts ringing. I will grab a fine file and gently, I'm not trying to make these grooves bigger, I just trying to clean the surface, correct? That's, that's what I'm trying to achieve. So here you are looking at before, I didn't touch that side yet. And this is after. Don't you think this is way better? The pads should be sliding on this perfectly with ease. I will use on that job this caliper press. This is from Bluepoint. If you are interested, you can buy it from Snap-on. So here is a ratcheting system. When I flip it, it will start basically expanding the tool. Come on. Oh yeah, now it touched the piston and I will carefully, slowly press the piston is coming in in the caliper and this might be actually enough now little warning before you will press the piston into the caliper especially if your pads were super thin you will be moving backwards a lot of fluid actually if you count both sides before you do that make sure that your brake fluid reservoir in the engine bay, somebody didn't top it and it's not full, because as you will start pressing the piston in the caliper, 
the fluid will also start rising into breaker reservoir and it will overflow and there will be mess it will be I remove this engine cover on this 09 Jetta and I can see after I press that driver side piston in I can do the same on the passenger side without evacuating any fluid from here because I can see nobody topped topped off this reservoir I'm still between the minimum and maximum which is on the front I also remove the passenger side and look at the back side which is normally hidden because there is the dust plate look how bad that the rotor is on the backside total scoring rust definitely these rotors cannot be resurfaced and shouldn't be used I finally got the new rotors and the new pads here and I just want to bring up to everybody in order to stop rust or prevent rust from happening while in storage this is oily there will be oil on it so that needs to be cleaned off first on both sides before installing it. New router, how beautiful it is. However, that back is soaked. So I will use spray clean and clean shock towel. I will make sure I remove that oily residue new router here is that space for that bolt which just holds it on that hub prevents it from falling off so I will rest it here I will put anti-seize on that mini bolt only after that I will match that carefully put it there and, uh, Repair manual says it's only four Newton meters. So don't crank on that too much before installing back that brake carrier. I will already use that brake caliper grease. This is high temperature grease and I will apply it on the channels where the brake pads will be traveling. It's easier do it right now instead of try to do it next to the brake rotor now I'm ready to install it in the place using those 21 millimeter bolts and these bolts need to be really torque a lot very tight the number the torque is hundred 90 Newton meters 190 Newton meters Now I will go ahead and clean completely these pins and lubricate them You don't loop the thread but that shiny area only Here is the brand new pad with that wire, with that sensor, right? So we can install it inside of that piston right here. I can install the outer brake pad here in the place. It will stay here for me. And can finally remove that caliper from the hanger and while watching the wire that I don't pinch it anywhere I will be able to install the whole caliper once again, the wire is good, so I will actually go ahead 
probably don't see it, but click it in. You heard it. Excellent. I love it. And I can see the wire is good in the back. It's clearing. And now I have prepared and looped one of these on that hex. I have a light here so it's all lined up. And I can install at least one of them. Catch the thread so it stays there. Once again, fully looped, except that thread. I'm not putting any lubricant on the thread. And these two sliding pins, or guide pins, as Volkswagen calls it, should be torqued to the 30 Newton meters, which is 22 foot pounds of torque. Let's not forget these dust caps, so they keep those pins in perfect condition. There's no rust. I better don't forget to put this retaining spring. If you look at the caliper, it's moving a lot, and that needs to be stopped. So you start with one end. Install it in and then you continue with the other part and after that I will just grab it with my fingers and put it right there and you will know that you install it correctly try to move the caliper forward as it was before it's not moving this is perfect. All of us have that one bolt ready in that 17 millimeter socket. Because the way it's designed, there are no studs. It keeps falling off. So the bolts are deep in the hole, so it will be difficult to put it there without that socket. But right now you can see very very easy you see it's already going off unbelievable so much easier on turtles whatever it's fine just have to find your tricks what a great feeling different feeling seeing that brand new brakes like this now when the vehicle is on the ground i will go ahead and torque all the wheel bolts to 120 newton meters and I will use that criss-cross pattern and don't forget to put this wheel lock key back in trunk now comes super important part of this procedure this brake job so right now, without putting key ignition and engaging any gears, I'm pumping that hydraulic system, the brakes, and I'm feeling for that resistance. And actually, the brake pedal is hard, and only now I know the brake pads are directly contacting the rotors. The system is ready for the test drive. And when I will go on the test drive, I will be on our street where is no traffic really. So I will drive or speed up approximately to 30 miles per hour and then I will very slightly brake to get these new brake pads used to the new rotor. I will not stop completely, I will probably stop doing this at 5 miles per hour, speed up again to 30 and down slowly to the 5, speed up to 30 and down to the 5 miles per hour. The purpose of it, it is that the brake pads are touching, uh, start uh, grinding or touching that new rotor and they get seated together. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, I hope you will find it helpful. If you do, please give it a thumb up and stay tuned, I have way more coming your way soon. What's about these rear brakes, huh? That will be probably the next video. See ya.